system. We've seen the damage that those damaging winds can do. I'm here in Little Rock, well, at least virtually. Yeah, I'm in Little Rock anyways, where it is going to be rainy and stormy later on, as Dr. Postel just showed you. Starting out this morning, not so bad, with the exception of the fact that I just checked the current OBS in Little Rock. Your dew point is sitting at 70 degrees. This is the type of air that if you went out to do your morning run this morning, you like just really probably couldn't even sweat it out because it is so humid. We're sitting at 75 degrees, as mentioned, the dew point at 70. So you can see where that relative humidity is very high. It's quiet currently, but you'll have that chance for storms building in as we move through the afternoon. So here's a time on that. Here's four, five, six o'clock, still quiet. We start to see those storms lifting in from the north to the south as we head into the evening hours. So much of your day in Little Rock is going to be just fine with the exception of those dew points in the 70s. Uh, and it's really going to be overnight tonight where you have a better chance for some of those storms blasting through. Meanwhile, in Nashville, same thing. Most of the day is going to be really nice for your Sunday. But by the overnight hours heading into 11 o'clock, you'll have that line of storms blasting through. The good news for Nashville is it's going to be a little bit more organized. So you kind of get through that line of storms and then you're done with it. And that's not the case for a place like Memphis. You can see some of these storms bubbling up out ahead of that main area of storms later this afternoon. By this evening, you've got a wall of rain and storms moving through their western portions of Tennessee. To the Ozarks now, where you have an even higher chance of these storms being uh, severe. Places like Springfield, Nevada, you've got the heavy rain, you've got the hail, you've got the gusty winds, you've got it all. That 49 corridor going to be a mess as we head through the evening. And then into the overnight, we start to see things clearing out. So you guys are getting into it a little bit earlier. Kansas City, you're pretty much stuck in on and off chances for heavy rain and showers through the late morning into your early afternoon, maybe even a few sprinkles into the mid afternoon as well. That will clear out and your Sunday night looks a lot better there in KC. Paul? Hey, well, check. The temperatures going up. That is exactly what's happening, or at least staying where they've been. Look at all of this potential for record heat that we've got, especially across southern portions of the country. All those little red dots, well, they're indicative of places that could see record heat. And for some of these areas, you've been in the 90s for more than a week now. So you're probably really loving the possibility for uh, maybe a bit of a cool down, but that is not going to happen. In San Angelo for today, we've got that possibility for uh, 105 degrees. That could be record heat. Indianapolis, same thing for you, record heat as well. So while 86 is not as hot as 105, when you're talking record heat, that is still going to be a problem. So for this week, we've got temperatures that are above 90 degrees for 55 million today, 53 tomorrow, and then 60 million by Tuesday. So this heat is sticking around. Here's what's happening. We've got a ridge in the jet stream, and that is going to push north and west, and that's going to expand expand this heat. So record highs, lots of them possible, especially over the next couple days. High temperatures for today, well into the triple digits for portions of Arizona and Texas, and that is going to be approaching that record territory. Dallas and Wichita Falls both hit 93 yesterday. So for both places, we're going to be significantly hotter today. San Angelo, 105 degrees is your forecast. That would just smash the old record. San Angelo, the coolest that you've been in the last nine days is 97 degrees. So talk about it being uncomfortable. That's why we have a heat advisory in effect. It's going to feel like the triple digits as we move through the afternoon. So if you're barbecuing, if you're heading out to any of those kind of summer kicking off type events that we love to do on Sunday as well, keep in mind, make sure you're hydrating and finding some shade. Here's where we could have some record heat tomorrow. San Antonio, the forecast is 100. The old record is 97. So you could smash that old record. All of these places could be seeing some temperatures that would break records. Paul? thousands of times mm -hmm. and at night perhaps doing his or maybe on a call and then boom the road is gone yeah. so watch out lots of heavy rain right now it's half past the hour weekend recharge rolling on on a sunday i'm paul goodlow and i'm felicia combs dr postel is also here with us as well of course yeah because we're tracking a lot of storms and severe weather today in fact storms Still this morning, watching that tree come down. You know, we get a lot of attention when we're talking about torcons and tornadoes, and quite often, sometimes people don't pay as much attention when there's just a damaging wind threat, but it can be just as dangerous. So we do have that risk for uh, the, the severe weather today. So let's talk about it because we are already seeing some active weather. Uh, we've got severe thunderstorms that are blasting through just kind of outside of Kansas City right now. Tons of lightning associated with that. A couple severe storms that are marked there just 
areas to the north and east of Wichita. A closer look at where we also have some flooding ongoing right now. We've got a flash flood warning for Atchison County. That's until 11 a.m. It's been raining there for quite some time. And as you can see, we're not done with the rain just yet. Here's our severe thunderstorm warning that is including Kansas City, Overland Park. You guys are in that as well. So you're definitely uh, dealing with that heavy rain, that lightning and that thunder. And as I look at this, you can kind of see this backward C shape that's associated with this pocket of storms that's blasting through. That's quite often indicative of maybe some stronger winds within that. That might be why we're seeing that severe thunderstorm warning. So take cover. You don't want to be uh, out and about in that. Heading back west now into uh, Kansas, Emma, Heston, Hillsboro until 9 a.m. So you have a little while longer left on that. You'll notice some very heavy rain associated with that as well. And then all of this is just going to continue filling in and moving southward as we move through the rest of this afternoon. And that is going to result in the risk for some severe storms, Dr. Postel. I think the overall risk for severe weather today. So, well, we're just getting started here on Weekend Recharge. Later tonight, it's Eyes to the Skies events to encourage us to get out there and explore our parks. Ivan Levin with the National Park Trust joins us now with some inspiration. Good morning, Ivan. So let's talk about this. What's the idea behind Kids to Parks Day? Good morning. That are planned at parks around the country. If someone needs a little extra nudge to get out there, what can they go and experience? Are kind of planning activities. So, what are some of the activities that you can find there? Yeah, there are. You know, for example, just do not have a park close by. So, what can they do at home to celebrate our parks? And the there you go. Well, so we want to continue to celebrate our parks after the special event, of course, because they're very special places. How we can? How can we do that? Yeah. Basically, kids to parks day. So, can you talk to us just a little bit about why it's so important to get the kids away from the electronics and out in nature? Absolutely. Well, parks are back. So there's tons of national parks in your area, but kind of give our viewers kind of a rundown outside of the D.C. Virginia area. Maybe your top five parks uh, across the nation. Yeah, there. Well, Ivan, thanks so much for talking to us this morning. That's Ivan Levin with the National Parks Foundation. Valuable information. Now, I just want to see the fight that like a six year old puts up when you take away the <laughs> iPad and but you know what, when they that. realize that, okay, this screen isn't as good as this screen, or, I mean, the, yeah. Mother Nature, ah, the, the original HD TV, <laughs> so get out there and enjoy it. Said just like a curmudgeon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's take, <laughs> let's take a look at yours. More to come here on Weekend Recharge. Fire dangers are popping up and spreading out at the beach and a few hours and I'm not counting down, but I might be counting down. Uh, let's take a look at your hazard flags for beach safety here so that you know if you are on the beach and you see double red flags, it is closed. You should not be in the water for sure. Dangerous if the red flag is flying. Caution if the yellow is flying and green all clear. Also, if you see a purple flag, that's indicative of dangerous sea life. So maybe someone has um, spotted uh, the, the, the lifeguards have spotted jellyfish or something like that. So our current rip current forecast, you can see moderate risk here here across much of the southeast coast, portions of the Florida Panhandle high there, though, for portions of the Outer Banks. So please, please, please be careful if you're swimming. Those um, those rip currents can pull even the most experienced swimmers under. In Miami, you've got the chance for some storms on and off. It's kind of getting into that rainy season pattern up to Vero Beach, where you've got a, a low chance of some afternoon storms. But you do have a coastal flood advisory going into effect later for Vero Beach and Daytona Beach. So that's going to last through Tuesday because we've got high astronomical tides. So some flood prone places could be seeing some of that flooding going on in those regions. A closer look at the forecast for Pensacola. Now I will tell you our forecast is saying 60%. I think that's overdoing it. I don't think you're going to see that much ac action in Pensacola this afternoon. Panama City Beach, a scattered chance for some rain for the second portion of your day, lower 80s otherwise. And then a quick look at Clearwater Beach where you're in the lower 80s, plenty of sunshine today. So don't forget that sunblock. Paul. Yes, yeah, sunshine and over a minute. But first, let's take a look at your seven day stretch as we glide our way through May and some of us continue with the baking temperatures and others continue with the chance for storminess 98 in Dallas for your Sunday. Meanwhile, we've got storms moving across the central portions of the country that could be a bit feisty, especially as we head through the afternoon and evening. That storm system pushes into the eastern seaboard by the time we get to Monday. Beautiful Monday in Chicago in the mid 70s, upper 50s for Seattle. Meanwhile, LA sunny for you and in, in 
the mid 70s. Looking toward next Tuesday, you can see the heat still sticking around in Dallas. Atlanta also getting toasty in the upper 80s. By the time we get to your Wednesday, we see that plume of rain and storms moving across the Ohio River Valley. Isolated chance for some storms in Denver as well. And for your Thursday across the northern tier, you've got that rain, you've got that storm chance. Seattle, upper 50s, finally some sunshine for you and the heat not breaking at all in Dallas. By the time we get to Friday, we've got the chance for some afternoon storms in Chicago. Denver, quite a bit cooler for you. You're going to be below average in the upper 50s. And heading to your Saturday, a front stretching from the northeast to the lower Mississippi Valley, bringing us a chance for more rain. Enjoy your Sunday.